Good morning. Today's lecture class is about diapotus mellitus and oral manifestations of diapotus mellitus. So we will quickly browse through what is the pathophysiology of diapotus mellitus and then talk in detail about oral manifestations of diapotus mellitus and dental considerations. See, uh, metabolism basically is like an activity that is going on in our body, right? For example, uh, for something to take place, for some action to take place, we need some energy. That energy has to be derived from some or the other way. For example, uh, we derive energy from eating, eating, drinking, food, eating, food, drinking water, juice, and like that, and then taking in oxygen, right? So whatever we take in, that goes inside, and then uh, that will be converted into, like you said, different chemicals. And that will be again utilized by the body for different uh, parts. So that activity that takes place is called as metabolism. And by definition, it can be anything, but this is a basic thing. Okay. So why are we going to talk about diapotus mellitus here? Because uh, it is a, it, again uh, uh, this is a defect in the carbohydrate metabolism. Carbohydrate, as in food, the food that we eat will actually break down into sugar particles, right? So because of that, any disorder in that can actually result in uh, this thing, diabetic mellitus, uh, diabetes mellitus. So in this, we'll just briefly talk about endocrine disorder, uh, diabetes mellitus, role of insulin in diabetes mellitus, types, and most importantly for you, will be oral manifestations of diabetes mellitus and dental consideration management. From oral pathology point of view, the common question will be like oral manifestations of uh, diabetes mellitus. Yeah, this is the definition from actually from uh, Schaeffer's. It can be like some total of tissue activity as concerned in terms of physical chemical changes associated with and regulated availability, utilization, disposal of protein, fat, carbohydrate, vitamin 6, and this whole thing. This is com can be complicated. Okay, the basic thing what I told was whatever you take in, it has to be broken down into substances and it will be available as proteins, fat, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, etc. Right? So that will be taken down by the body for its various activities in terms of energy or anything like that. So when there is a disturbance in this normal uh, metabolic process, that will result in some kind of a disturbance. When you, it's like a machine that is not maintained properly. You know, we are doing something, some uh, problem is there, it creates a problem. So that again, for example, if you're taking too much of fat, which is uh, fat uh, food particles, it is not going to be helpful for the body. That will create some problem. That will lead to obesity. Okay, there's always a control mechanism in the body to control, uh, you know, to keep things in normal level, which is necessary for the body. So like that, that will be controlled by both uh, intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Intrinsic, why we are talking about extrinsic factors here is the food that we eat, temperature, altitude, <clears throat> environment, many factors will be there. That should not add, uh, lifestyle is also important here. So this is basically about metabolism. It is an activity that takes place in the body. Okay. Like uh, in terms of physical and chemical activity that takes place, for which energy is taken by the body for its use. Okay, this is a basic thing. So this is the basic thing that I told you. We are taking in food that is broken down and uh, food is broken down in the mouth and then digested and energy is created in the form of sugar, poor carbohydrates, ATP molecules. That is required for the body repair and energy. So this is a cycle that goes on. When you then there is a when this will always be maintained in a normal way. When there is a disturbance in this, that will create a problem. Okay, that can be in any way. There are protein metabolic disorders, and you I think some classes were about vitamins also, right? So protein, carbohydrate, many things, and many hormones. So today I think diabetes will be more about a pancreatic hormone, which is insulin, and also about about basic carbohydrate metabolism. Right? Then there is a disorder. So, still, the, have you understand what is uh, metabolism? Is there any doubt for anybody? What is basically what metabolism is? No, sir. No, sir. No, everyone, it is just a very simple thing. Okay. And then, so now this is, see, this is the basic thing about diabetes. Okay. How insulin plays a role. And first of all, see, see you can see the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Food is consumed. And the food is again broken down into glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, etc. So, what happens when it uh, it goes into the blood, right? After you, after the food is broken, it goes in the blood. So there is uh, blood level, uh, there is an increase in the sugar, amino acids, and fatty acids. Normally, 
that is regulated by pancreas by releasing insulin what insulin does it it regulates the amount of uh, glucose in the body and it keeps it to the normal level what happens to these energy that is generated glucose again glucose carbohydrates will be broken down into glucose from glucose it goes down into atp molecules in terms of energy that you would have uh, again read last year right you uh, energy pathways are so that glucose I mean like uh, atp molecules will be saved for energy again it will go into different parts of the body fat muscles muscle tissues fat tissues okay that will be stored as glycogen when they require it. so this is the basic thing on how this works when there is a disorder like in number 4 pancreas releases the insulin if there is a problem with pancreas releasing insulin either by uh, nature by birth or yeah, by uh, any immune mediated genetically any problem is there or uh, in case of any external factors later in the age there can be a problem and other factors can also include if the tissues like for example once the insulin is released it has to be taken down by the fat tissues and muscles If the body is not able to take that insulin into the uh, like uh, glycogen into other uh, tissues, then that will probably cause an uh, alteration in the level of blood glucose. Okay. Next. So again, this is the role of this is to emphasize what we are going to talk about. I just I don't want to blindly go into talking about oral manifestations. Later again in your class, third year class, will be well understood. the right left side you see low blood glucose and high blood glucose that is you know whenever the whenever the food that you are taking down it goes into the body the pancreas uh, will release alpha cells and the beta cells one side the pancreas will actually regulate liver okay liver to maintain uh, glucose in the blood the other side the insulin will be released by beta cells by pancreas they will uh, send the uh, glucose to fat cells and muscle tissues also so this is a common uh, you know uh, mechanism that takes place to maintain the blood glucose levels this this is a regular thing whenever there's an alteration in this it will affect more problem this is just the same thing that i emphasized again so i place two arrow marks here right so what it means over here is you can see that both these are two way arrows here so the glucose will be after you eat the food product is broken down that will be available in the blood blood, blood stream that will uh, signal the pancreas to release alpha cells and beta cells and thereby again whatever i said glucagon will uh, activate liver to regulate uh, blood glucose level on the other side insulin will also regulate so again at same time the glucose molecules will also go to muscles and uh, your fat cells okay now right so you've understood till now basic what happens on how a glucose molecule is uh, observed and Is it understood? Yes, sir. So, um, can you repeat once again, like in a Which short part? detail? Which part? Uh, glucose. Okay. Uh, right. You want this thing or the normal this one? See, whenever you're consuming food, okay, the food is you are eating inside the mouth. You are eating, right? You are chewing it. That is the basic breakdown of food particles. Okay. Then what happens? It is further broken down, like all the salivary amylase and all that. I don't want to go too much into it. It goes into your stomach. There, what happens? The food is further broken down, and finally, it will be converted into glucose amino acids and fatty acids. Okay. Now, the food that you eat has glucose, right? It will be absorbed from intestine or from the body. It will be absorbed into the blood vessels. Okay. So what happens when you take too much? See, there. Uh, for example, you take too much of sweets, you will feel a lot of, uh, you know, you will even feel sleepy or anything like that, right? So that is because the glucose level is high in the blood. So what happens? Suddenly it should not go up or it should not go down. The body has to have a regulate. There should be a check mechanism for that. So what it does is once the blood level, blood glucose level increases, the pancreas will like start releasing insulin. insulin is the thing that is responsible for uh, regulating the glucose level for example if it is increased it will make sure that it is uh, given to others uh, issues and they will make sure the insulin will make sure that it is in a normal level okay that again is done by pancreas pancreas will release two, uh, two type of uh, hormones one is glucagon and uh, another one is insulin glucagon what it will do it will it will signal the liver okay 
insulin will sig- will directly uh, signal the blood ve- blood blood vessels to regulate the blood glucose levels so by this for example if it is going high it will make sure that uh, the glucose levels are maintained okay so basically why we are talking about that here is because in diabetes mellitus there is a disorder with insulin regulation okay insulin metabolism it is a pancreatic hormone that is why we are discussing about metabolic disorders here so so when that happens when there is a dysregulation in the uh, maintenance okay of the blood glucose level obviously it's or for example the pancreas is supposed to work it is not working what will happen it will not be able to regulate it so what happens the blood glucose level will obviously increase is that okay yes sir you have further notes i'll tell you again later okay so like i said uh, there is a disorder again don't con- get confused when i say carbohydrate and insulin carbohydrate is the food that we take it will be broken down right so there is nothing, nothing else is there so when there is a disorder in such uh, carbohydrate metabolism insulin can either be increased or insulin can either be decreased okay so what this happens what when there is a disorder okay that uh, will not help the tissue to absorb insulin I mean, like absorb glucose uh, your tissue all the body tissue cells they need glucose to work glucose is like the energy you know they release atp molecules that is like the energy for example when you are tired and you are running and you you need to take glucose right so that will give you the energy to to go on so what on the right side you see how does the insulin work insulin has to and the orange color thing that you see is the uh, tissues insulin has to go and act on the insulin receptor for the glucose to be absorbed into the cells only when that happens glucose will go into the cells so your cells will be energized okay so like i said when there is a problem with pancreas this absorption will not take place that is one way for example by genetically there is some problem with pancreas this cannot take place the right side thing will not take place when there is a problem uh, when there when insulin is produced less also glucose absorption will be very less other thing is for example if the tissue itself is not accepting uh, glucose uh, insulin it can be any autoimmune disorder or anything like that okay so at that time also glucose will not be absorbed into the tissue so what happens when when there is this you know glucose is not absorbed into the tissue where will it be can you guess can anyone if it is not absorbed into the tissue where will it again be can anyone guess tell i'll give you a few options okay you tell me if you know something you tell me otherwise i'll give you two of quick options you wait uh, once you eat it goes into the intestine okay if the regulation is normal from the blood it will go into the uh, it will be signaled by the pancreas and then uh, it will go into the tissues so i'm telling that it is not the signaling mechanism is not working properly the thing is not working properly where will it be then it will be in the blood okay uh, liver so, no it will be in the blood mm-hmm. right so it has to be absorbed in the blood first right it is already there in the why do we take blood test when there is some problem in the mechanism it will be left off in the blood so in the blood the glucose level will start increasing that's why you take a blood test right when you see for sugar levels you take a blood test no so that's the reason so what happens there is increased level of uh, sugar in the blood that is called as uh, hyperglycemia what this causes is it is reducing the amount of uh, glucose in the tissue right so right now on the other side normally tissue has to absorb the glucose that is not available right now so what this will do is it will reduce the amount of glucose in the tissue like the energy is reduced so the tissue will be prone to uh, more infection so that is the basic thing when there is not enough glucose and then there is increased glucose in the blood automatically tissue will be devoid of energy and glucose that will cause chances of infection in the tissue okay this is a basic metabolic disorder why diabetes is a metabolic